Hi everyone, Bernard here on behalf of MovieGameNostalgia.com, a little movie review special on this one today. Not really, I'm not really in the demographic, am I, for this uh, for this one? But uh, blue story. I mean, I like the blue element of it, being a, being a Man City fan. But there you go, the blue story. But it's obviously nothing to do, nothing to do with football, etc. So I'm going to have a look at this today. I had a very brief. Uh, uh, go out at the cinema obviously it caused a bit of controversy so I'll, I'll tell you about that anyway um blue story it's 9 night it's out to buy on the 20th of april 2020 so it's out to buy while well, i'm recording this next week at 9.99 on dvd it's an hour and 31 minutes and it's a british crime drama star stephen odubola michael ward and callie Best. Directed by Ratman, a well-known, I don't know this guy, but apparently he's well-known. He's um, obviously a, a DJ and uh, I think he's reasonably popular. I have no idea. But he's, he also uh, stars as Andrew Onwubolu on in the in the actual film. Uh, this is his feature adaptation and directorial debut, of course, of, uh, of his YouTube series. And Blue Stories is, is a tragic tale of best friends Marco and Timmy, who from different areas of London, Peckham and Deptford, find themselves becoming enemies in a violent and insidious postcode war. Blue Story is based around events of Ratman's own personal experiences growing up in Deptford in the London Borough of Lewisham and being sent to school in Peckham in the London Borough of Southwark. Thereby, thereby crossing gang-affiliated borders, the film depicts real-life gangs, Peckham Boys and the Ghetto Boys. It does have a worrying background. I did mention the cinema release. Uh, obviously, the I think it was released in March in the US, or it was attempted to be, but obviously with the coronavirus thing, I don't think it probably never aired. I'm not 100% sure, but it did get released in November in the UK. And on the 23rd of November 2019, it was reported that during a screaming, screening, of, well, screaming is probably appropriate, actually, a screening of Blue Story at Star City Cinema Complex in Birmingham, England, police were attacked by a group armed with machetes. Police arrested five teenagers. But whilst, I mean, five teenagers, families were actually watching Frozen 2 at this complex as well when, when this disorder broke out. I mean, sparking an evacuation of the complex. The police states up to 100 teenagers were involved in the major disorder. This is Birmingham, don't forget. This isn't London where this thing was based. A spokesperson for West Midlands Police stated that dozens of officers were sent to the complex after a 999 call just after 5.30pm, reporting a group of youths with machetes. Two machetes were seized during the trouble, which saw pockets of fighting and seven police officers left with minor injuries as they dealt with the crowds in and around the cinema. On the 24th of November 2019, West Midlands Police reported that a six teenager had been added to those arrested, which included a female aged just 13, a male and female both aged 14 and a 19-year-old man. Following the disorder at this Star City complex, the View chain of cinemas cancelled all screenings of the film. A statement from View said that during the first 24 hours of the film, more than 25 significant incidents reported and escalated to management in 16 separate cinemas around the country. Uh, cinema chain Showcase subsequently also ceased showing the film, but the Odeon and Cineworld chain continued to screen it. The ban by Showcase and View was labelled as racist, Perhaps they're trying to stop people who've gone to watch Frozen 2 with the kids getting hit by machetes. Who knows? It was labelled as racist by some people on social media. The showcase later reversed in their decision. The film's director, Ratman, also questioned the reasons behind the ban. View also said they would restart showings with increased security. But apparently many of this of this cast, I've not actually, I've, I have seen snippets of this series. Many of the cast also appear in the Netflix series Top Boy, which... I will probably go back and watch. I know it's, it's nearly 10 years old now, that series. Is it any good? Well, I mean, there's a 1.3 million budget spent on this um, blue story. And it's actually got, even though obviously <laughs> obviously limited problems at the cinema, it actually got back just under 5 million. So for a British low-budget effort, that's not a bad return. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, the film's got an approval rating of 92%. But again, only based on 12 reviews with an average rating of seven out of ten so things can get a little bit skewed when you've only got so limited reviews mike mccahill of the guardian gave the film uh six out of ten and called it an assured and capably performed morality play bbc films themselves say the film powerfully depicts the futility of gang violence i'm not too sure about that but more on that in a moment 
internet movie database, Joe Public, who watched the film, uh, are giving it 5.4 out of 10 cents, so not a great score. I mean, obviously, the, the comments from the people that watched it, some people, the pros for it, the people who, who enjoyed it, made comments such as, glad I saw it, uh, more than just violence and knives, good film, gritty, well-made British gang culture movie, great movie, better than I expected. And some of the cons, well, trash, badly executed, Good try, but poor. Too many dumb characters. A disappointment. A bit dull and could do with subtitles. So as you can see from that, as with many reviews, very, very mixed response. So yeah, as a as a sixty year old white white guy, I mean, I am I class myself as working class. I'm certainly not middle class. You know, I'm still still working on, you know, still struggling to pay the bills. Yeah, I'm not in the demographic for this ever, but obviously I had a little watch of it and just made a little few notes about it and. I mean, there's plenty of 1 out of 10s and there's plenty of 10 out of 10s. So both extremes, which you tend to ignore when you're looking at reviews. Uh, watchers, who, people who've watched it, who live in there, who claim to live in the actual areas. I mean, there's some saying it's either rubbish, I mean, it's not right real, real life, or there's some saying, you know, it's normal. That, that's what it is like. Well done, you know. So it's totally, total confusion all around. You don't know who to believe. I mean, I'm... As you can see, I'm personally a million miles away from this, and the nearest I can, I can get is my knowledge of, of football violence back in the 70s onwards, where, where I was at times aware and occasionally caught up in such things, although I always did my best you know, to avoid rather than actively take part. Sometimes you had no choice. But as a film and entertainment, I thought, yeah, it was okay. It wasn't too bad. I quite enjoyed it. I mean, I, you know, the accents obviously put people, people said they needed subtitles. I, I sort of coped okay with it. I, you know, I, I didn't struggle too much with it. Uh, there's a lot of criticism about the acting. I thought the acting was okay. I didn't I didn't think uh, the guys in it were any worse than some of the other sort of the style of film I've seen over the years. But, it, yeah, it did lack depth as far as the characters were concerned. I didn't really care about many of them, to be honest with you, which is you want to invest in people, don't you, in these sort of films? You want to care about what happens to them. And I don't think there was much too much said about the main characters' backgrounds, etc. So we didn't really know the guys and whether we should be sticking up for them. Yeah, you had the, the the nice lads who seemed to be having a laugh and joke, and then you had the hard men and this sort of thing. But there wasn't enough about the backgrounds of the characters really to, to sort of make you invest in them. So I was a bit disappointed with that. From a moral viewpoint, yeah, I mean, someone said about it teaches morals in one of the critics' reviews, but, I mean, my real criticism is that I was sure Ratman is trying to get over all this moral tale and we shouldn't do it, this is bad. But it all seemed a little bit rushed at the end of the film, the, the scenes where obviously the guys are going into schools and trying to tell people about gangs, etc. all seemed a little bit rushed in the final scenes. And then the, the actual final sequence, uh, after, after a couple of the credits have rolled, I think, um, we have a final scene that, that just says the circle of violence is set to continue because you get, you know, other young guys coming along and, and getting a gun out of his pocket. And, you know, so, you know, nothing's learned. Nothing's learned from this. So it was very, very, in my opinion, disappointing and very, very depressing. Uh, but as a modern Brit gangster film, it is sort of passable. Uh, is it a real reflection on problems in London? I'm not sure. I just know what I look at the paper. I mean, I, I, do, I do have visits to London, but I, I certainly don't go to these areas that concern and walk around. Um, as far as the youth turning up at cinemas with machetes, to be honest with you, yeah, I've locked them all up for a very, very, very long time. You know, I, I am, <laughs> and that's that's how that's how I feel about it. But as a film, this is a film we're watching. You know, yeah, I'm going to give it my little watchable rating yeah i'm gonna give it my watchable rating six out of ten i thought it was okay um for what it is um i don't certainly don't ag agree with most of the sentiment in it and people in the film that the, the 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 style and the character some of the some of the more obnoxious horrible characters are the sort of people i just dislike you know boys playing with tough think they're hard you know with guns, etc., and it's not just obviously London, it's not just gang culture, it's around the world, isn't it? Us, you know, men mainly who just act as though, you know, it's a game and life means nothing. And yeah, the, the actual theme disappoints me and upsets me. But as, as a film to watch, yeah, I was a bit, I would have a bit, bit more of a moral stance at the end rather than a cop out, which I felt it was by, by Ratman. As I say, I don't know what is his uh, audiences or who he's appealing to. But I think I think there was a point to be made. He didn't quite make it, unfortunately. He tried to, but then 
in the end he just sort of went wishy-washy and copped out in my opinion anyway please let me know what your thought i mean for what my thoughts are worth for a film like this you know obviously young people are saying as i said in the uh, in the description of this i'll fart what does he know but hey i have lived through a sort of element of it i have been involved i've been around knives being used in football violence etc fortunately nothing's nothing bad ever happened and i i did stay clear where possible but as I said, you, you do get mixed up with these things, but it's a different thing altogether, isn't it? To this um, tribal. I mean, we had little gangs, of course, we did have little gangs, but nothing, nothing like this. I mean, it was, uh, you know, a fight was a fight. It didn't normally involve machetes or things like that. But uh, anyway, as I say, I'm not quite the demographic for this, but I did appreciate it as a film. Understand, as I say, but I think Ratman. I think he's i think he bottled it a little bit and uh perhaps as i said he's got other fish to fry and that's probably why he may have done that but anyway let me know in the comments what you think if you get to watch this because i think it is worth a watch you know from whatever age you are uh please give it a watch and let me know in the comments what you think if you're a younger person and you, and you do listen to me uh do listen to these things please please let me know what you think and your your views on it Anyway, thanks for that. Uh, please follow me for all the latest film news, TV drama news, etc. If you're into football, obviously, you know, I do my little Manchester City vlogs as well. If, you, if you're into that, please follow me and uh, push that old subscribe button. It'd be great. Push the bell notification so you know these little reviews, etc. are coming out. And thumbs up's always nice. Be appreciated. But very, very, you know, not very street cred, is it? Thumbs up, but hey, <laughs> they're always appreciated. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Charles Deneen. Deneen spelt D I W N W N, or my other account, which is at nostalgia underscore movie. So either of those two, they're both linked together. They both have the same sort of material on them. So you can follow me on either or both of those if you if you so wish. And also on Facebook, at Bird of Deneen, with links to my little little site, moviegamenostalgia.com, for old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 90s and 2000s, and the older board games, the Waddington stuff, the Parker stuff from the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. So if you can have a look on there, fantastic. Much appreciated. It all, all helps. Even if you have a look around, you don't buy anything, it all helps the uh, analytics and the Google footfall and gets me up the ladder a little bit. So please, if you can spare some time. Thanks for watching. Have a good day with the rest of your day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your family. Look after your friends. And let's all look after each other. Eh? This is Bernard saying goodbye for now. Hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.